So this talk is going to be our first order linear differential equations. Uh, there's a general concept of linear differential equation. It says that the differential equation should be linear in the dependent variable and each of its derivatives, but need not be linear in x. And the first order case looks something like this. Now, in general, you could have a coefficient on the dy dx also. Why is the dependent variable x the independent variable? You could have a coefficient in general on dy dx also, but you could divide everything by that and bring it in this form. So this is the general first order linear differential equation. Okay. Now, there's a general solution strategy for these. So first order linear differential equations can always be solved. And when I say solved, I mean they can always be converted into integration problems. Okay. Uh, so here's how you do it. Uh, so you find a function capital H whose derivative is P. Okay, so you find an antiderivative for the coefficient of pi. Okay, and uh, and what you do is you take this differential equation and you multiply both sides by e to the power hx. Okay, now the left side I claim becomes e to the hx times y differentiated with respect to x. Okay, so the left side is the derivative with respect to x of this thing. Do you see that? Well, let's just calculate what this is. Remember, y is a function of x. So, so we have to do implicit differentiation. e to the hx y. What is this? e to the hx. Well, it's derivative of the first and the second. So, that's the derivative of the first thing is e to the hx times h prime x which is assumed to be px times y oh times y plus e to the hx times y prime d y dx okay good and this you take out the e to the hx com as a common factor and let's write them in the reverse order so dy dx plus pxy that's exactly what we have on the left side okay the left side is the derivative of this after you multiply by e to the hx. Okay, and the right side is qx times e to the hx. So now you have this in this derivative of this is this. So you integrate both sides and you get e to the hxy is qx e to the hx dx. Okay. So y is what? Y is, well, you, you bring the e to the hx to this side, becomes e to the minus hx. We are taking the reciprocal. So y is e to the minus hx times the integral of qx e to the hx dx. And h is, remember, an antiderivative of p. So you have uh, reduced this solving the first order linear differential equation to two integration problems, right? First, you have to integrate p. But when you're integrating p, you don't have to put the plus c there. Okay? Right? You just take any one function whose derivative is p. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And then the next is this integration problem. Okay, or rather this integration problem. And these two integration problems together solve the first order differential equation. Now here's another way of writing this. And that is that, well, how will the plus c appear here? There'll be a plus c coming from the integral. Okay. And now when you multiply by e to the minus hx, you'll get plus c e to the minus hx. So I can actually write, write it like this. General solution. is particular solution plus what c times e to the capital hx c in r what this means is that if you even if you don't want to do this integration it's a lot of work uh, it's too tricky, too much integration by parts. If you can somehow guess and figure out any one particular solution to the differential equation, then, and you found out what hx is, then you can just write general solution as particular solution plus c e to the minus hx. Okay? Okay. Uh, there's also a definite integral version. Mm, I'll just write the conclusion for the definite integral version. If you are given that, so or rather, rather what I said, the initial value problem. So if x equals x naught uh, gives y equals y naught, then the initial value problem solution is solution to the initial value problem.
is y is e to the minus hx times e to the hx naught y naught plus integral x naught to x now i cannot use x as the dummy as the dummy variable of integration because i'm using x as the limit so i can use i can use some other letter like t okay uh, just uh, i didn't derive it completely but just to check that this works well what do you have to check is it is it part of the general solution yes it is right this this is e to the minus hx times a this is a constant so it's a constant at e to the minus hx plus e to the minus hx times one antiderivative of this thing right so it matches this this thing but now i want to check that at x naught it's y naught well when you plug in x equals x naught what do you get you get e to the minus hx naught times e to the hx naught y naught what does that become why not? Why not? And what about this this integral? One, oh, zero. Zero. So y is y not at x equals x not. Okay, good. So let's now do uh, some examples. Uh, let's just do an example. Let's put this one. Okay, so. We'll do a few classes of examples. The first one is a, is a pretty simple, straightforward application of this approach. Okay, so y prime plus y is e to the e to the x. Looks scary. Okay, so in our setup, what is p and what is q here? Px is one, qx is e to the e to the x. Okay. So Px is uh, 1 and Qx is e to the e to the x. So what can we take as hx? x. If you want, you could also take x plus 500 if you wanted, but we can, we just need to pick one choice, right? So hx is x. Okay, good. So, uh, so let's just go directly here. I won't write down all the intermediate steps. You can, if you just remember this, you can just directly get here. So y is what? It's e to the negative x times integral of what? e to the e to the x times e to the x dx. Okay, what is that? e, e to the negative x times e to the x. What is e this integral? e to the x. So this integral you can do u substitution, right? u is e to the x, you get e to the u du, then it's, so this integral is e to the e to the x plus And as here, the general solution is uh, this uh, this particular solution. So, so one particular solution is just the, this product, and the, and the general solution is this plus c e to the minus x. Okay, let's do another one. Another one quickly. Then we'll do a third one, which is a little more interesting. X y prime plus y is sine x. Well, how do you first make it linear? Divided by x. Okay, so you get y prime plus y over x is sine x over x. Okay. Now what? Look for hx. What is hx? It's the integration of 1 over x. Yeah, let's just take it as ln x. Well, it's actually ln plus minus. We don't know if x is positive. Let's just, assume, let's just think of it as ln x. So what is e to the hx? x. x. So so what do you get from here? Y equals to e to the minus hx, which is the reciprocal of e to the x. So that's one over x. One over x integral qx at sine x over x times e to the hx is x dx. So what do you get? Sine x over x. No, sine x you have to integrate that. Right, so what do you get? Cosine x. Negative cosine x. So you get C minus cosine x over x. Okay? 
and it kind of makes sense uh, uh, that that you I mean you could have picked uh, if you wanted the kind of uh, ln of minus x if you assumed x is negative if you could you done the same procedure you would have got the same answer finally because the uh, it, it wouldn't affect it okay good now this is actually not a very nice way of doing this because essentially what did we do we first took this equation we divided both sides by x right mm -hmm. then what did we do if we trace our steps here we have multiplied both sides by what e to the hx which was e, e to the x to hx no, we multiplied both sides here. Oh, e to the hx. Is what? x. x. So if we started with this, we divided by x and then we multiplied back by x. We didn't write those steps because they're just common to all linear differential equations. But we divided by x and multiplied by x and then we did something, right? Mm -hmm. That was kind of a roundabout. There's actually an, an easier way of doing this without using the whole divide and then multiply back. What's, what would that be? If I just gave you this. You could do that sort of without doing that divide and multiply that. What would you do? There's another method for this. Um, you do a substitution. What substitution do you do? X, Y. Yes. If you, you could directly do this by doing U is X, Y substitution, right? That would get you the same answer more quickly. What would it become then? You'd get, uh, is this here? No. The, the down here? Can use the other side? Oh, with this side in it. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So if you if you did the u is x y substitution, what would you get? You'd get the the left side would become u prime. Yeah, d u d x, which is you can call it u prime is sine x. So u is c minus cosine x when you integrate both when you move it here and do that. And therefore, x, y is c minus cosine x. So, y is c minus cosine x over x. Okay. So, you could have got it with the substitution and, and do that. But, but substitution sort of takes some thinking, right? You have to decide what the substitution is. If you can convert it to linear, that definitely tells you there's one way of doing it, even if it's not the uh, simplest way. Okay. Let's do another example. So we have space, so maybe we'll just do it on here. Okay. To the next one. Uh, let's see. It maybe it's better to do on a separate sheet. Okay. So this example is interesting because it uh, Maybe I'll put this on the sheet itself. Okay. This, this third example is interesting because it, it, it shows you sometimes that you don't have to do the integration. You can use this method. It's a short example. So here's the example. Y prime plus Y is tan X plus tan square X. Okay. So what happens here? Well, what is the px, qx, and hx? qx is this thing. px is? 1. 1. So, hx is? x. x. So, uh, so, if you want to solve it the usual way, what would you get? You'd get y is e to the minus x integral what? tan x plus tan x. e to the x times, right? Oh, yeah, you're, oh you're writing that later. Fine. tan x plus tan square x times? Now this integration is seems like a little tricky, right? So instead of doing this integration, let's try to directly find a particular solution to this thing. Okay? Let's try to find a particular solution to this. And once we've done that, then we just uh, kind of uh, plug that uh, and then you know the general solution will be any particular solution plus c e to the minus x, which is just c e to the minus x. Okay? So instead of trying to do this integration, let's just try to directly see if you can spot a solution to this. They're actually equivalent. Finding a particular solution is just the same as actually doing this integration. But it's maybe it's easier to think of it in these terms. 
So can you think of a function such that when you add that to its derivative, you get tan x plus tan square x? Well, what if you just took tan x? What would you get? What would you get if you took tan x? I forgot what derivative of tan x is. Secant x. Secant square x, which is 1 plus tangent square x. So if you took uh, tan x, then what would you get? y prime plus y would be? Secant square x times tan x. That's tan x. Mm -hmm. So it would be tan x plus secant square x. So it would be... Uh, off by one. one. So what should what is the particular solution? Ten x minus one is a particular solution. So now can you tell me what the general solution is? Ten x plus c. Y is what? Are we here? Mm -hmm. Ten x minus one plus what? C. Oh, not really. C times something, right? Um, C, C times this thing. It's always C times e to the minus hx. And basically, mm -hmm. it's C times the thing outside the integral, right? Because there'll be a plus C coming from here. And that will multiply. So what is it? Plus C times e to the negative x. Yes. If you actually did this integral, you would get this integral would be uh, e to the x times tan x minus 1 plus, uh, plus c. If you want to do this integral, it would be just be e to the x times this thing plus c. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you would get. So, so here the important thing is that, that once you found a particular solution, the general solution is just that plus c e to the minus h. So you could try to find the particular solution just by inspection or guesswork or, or something else. So let me write another quick example. Uh, okay, tell me the general solution quickly. Quickly? Yeah. Well, can you find a particular solution quickly? Next time. Oh, sorry. Oh, I found this is Let's just do it. Uh, oh, let me, let's make it uh, minus. Okay. Then y is sin x. Is this right? Y is minus. Hmm? Sorry. Oh. Y. Well, so what should y, so just, I mean, what would, I, if y is negative cosine x, what's the derivative of negative cosine x? So does negative cosine x match this equation? Here. Okay. So what's the general solution? Negative cosine x plus c. Not plus c, right? That was the whole point. It's plus c times? Oh, plus c times e to the... You define what is hx? I square over 2. Negative x square over 2. Oops. Okay. That's the mistake a student will make. What mistake? Plus c, not c times e to the negative hx. I'm just, just, just trying to justify my mistake. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm, that's why I'm mentioning this. Let's do one more quick example in that case, since you said it's prone to make mistakes. So, So what's the general solution? Sin x. 
that's a particular solution. Plus hmm? e to the negative plus c times c e to times the times e to the cosine x. How do you get cosine x? Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, mm -hmm. and then you did minus of that, right? Mm -hmm. So e to the Okay, good. So now you got the idea, right? So in some cases, you can just find a particular solution just by inspection, okay? And then the general solution you get from that. So this, so this, this method is useful even if you don't need for particular solution. You, can, you still need it to get the general solution from particular solution, okay?